back for part three. Uh, I wish I could uh, promise you it was going to be short and sweet, but these questions take a little bit of time. So off we go into uh, into part three. Uh, here's the function. Let's talk about asymptotes first. What shall we do first? Vertical asymptotes. Okay, the ver vertical asymptotes happen when the bottom are uh, zero. So it looks like at some point we're going to need to factor these things. So let's factor them. The difference of squares on the bottom, easy trinomial on the top, numbers that multiply to get negative 6 and add to get 1. Huh. Huh. There's that case, isn't it? That case where I have a factor on the top and a factor on the bottom. So those can cancel. So that means this expression is actually the same as x plus 3 over x plus 2 as long as x isn't equal to 2. Does that mean x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote? No. No, it's not a vertical asymptote because we had the factor that's cancelled that this is equal to this. There was a hole, right? There's a hole at x equals 2. Um, but there is a vertical asymptote also at um, x equals minus 2, and we should, if we are being thorough, investigate the behavior um, on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this. Uh, the limit as x approaches 2, a uh, negative 2 rather, from the left is going to be, well, of f at x. And I'll think of this real quick. This is going to be positive over a negative. Positive over a negative is a negative. So that's negative infinity. And the limit as x goes to a negative 2 from the right of f at x, this is going to be a positive over a positive because this is around negative 1.9. So this is going to be a positive over positive, positive infinity. So let's add those things to um, our puzzle. Remember, here's our here's our puzzle board, which is actually our sketch. So what does that calculation add to us? We'll do it in purple this time. Why not? Minus 2, it's there. There's a vertical asymptote. Notice I'm not going to draw a vertical asymptote at positive 2, but I am going to place that on there. So that when I draw the graph, I know that I got to go up or down to the graph and put a hole there, right? A hole at x equals 2. All right, vertical asymptotes done. Horizontal asymptotes. How do we do this? Well, I see it's going to be 1, right? It's going to be 1. That's from functions. I know since the, since the uh, degree is the same, I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at 1. But I'm going to show you that again why that's true in calculus. x squared plus x minus 6. Notice I'm using the expanded version here. Why am I doing that? Because it's easier to factor out the value of x squared. 1 plus 1 over x minus 6 over x squared all over x squared. Um, 1 minus 4 over x squared, and what do we got? We've got a number that's a little bit more than 1 over, uh, uh, that's going to be uh, 1. A little bit more than 1, right? This is a little bit more than 1. This is a little bit less than 1. So guess in your head before I say uh, less than 1. So a number that's a little bit more than 1 divided by a little a number that's a little bit less than 1, well, this is going to be a, a number that's a little bit more than 1, isn't it? So that means this is going to approach the horizontal asymptote from above. Right? That's that calculation. All right. And we could do the same thing on the left. I, th I think it's going to be below, but I know you're, you can hardly wait to be rid of me for today. It's been a long lesson. Um, but that's... You know, check. Intercepts. 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 Intercepts quickly. There's the I. 
I like doing it just like this. Usually you can catch the X and Y intercepts in your head when X is zero, uh, bang, bang, zero, 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 uh, six over four, that's three over two or 1.5. So X is zero, Y is 1.5. Uh, and then when y is zero, when y is zero uh, here, then I got x equals minus three. Notice I could have more than one thing. You notice if if I didn't cancel that that uh, factor out, I would have had two as a zero as well. But I don't. I just have y is zero and x is minus three. Minus three. Uh, that's minus two. Minus three is here. And notice already I, I see what's going on in this picture. Do you see what's going, going to happen? Um, and did I did I actually add this to my graph? Uh, negative 2 from the left is going to go down. I never put that on, but there it is. That's this. This, so negative 2 to the right is up here. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? It's going to be just like this. Again, not much more than our function knowledge at, plays, at play here. And I'm hoping that um, our analysis of the derivative will will just confirm what we've what we've calculated, but the derivative is actually not that much fun. So let's by not that much fun we mean like it's going to be lots of fun to do. So notice that as long as so there's asymptotes intercepts. Now let's talk about mins and maxes in blue. Not much of a story left to tell already, but mins and maxes. Notice that f at x is equal to, why not, can we use this simple simple form? Oops, x plus 3 and x plus 2. As long as, uh, as long as x is not equal to negative 2, right? The two expressions are the same. As long as x is, isn't equal to 2, they are the same. Do we care about the derivative? Well, the derivative isn't going to exist there because the function doesn't exist there. It's discontinuous, so why don't we take the deriv derivative of this simpler form? If we took the derivative of the more complicated form, that factor will still cancel out, I promise you. Uh, well, let's do it. Let's do the derivative of this, this simpler form, as long as x is not equal to, to 2. And notice that 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 number should go on our should also go on our our uh, number line once we once we get that far. Quotient rule again happens a lot with uh, rational functions, right? Derivative of the top, right down the bottom, subtract right down the top, derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. And what do I got? I got x plus 2 minus x plus 3 all over, oops, x plus 3, all over x plus 2 all squared, not cubed, squared, all squared, and that is minus 1 over, when's this thing equal to 0? Never. But, uh, does not exist at x equals minus 2. So that's a, a um, actually, is that a critical point? Is that a critical point uh, at x? No, because the original graph doesn't exist. Uh, same as at x equals 2, the original graph doesn't exist. So, Here's my derivative number line. No, I should. Uh, I can't do that. I can't. Can't in good conscience do a number line that looks like that. That looks better. Okay. Minus two and two, undefined, undefined. What's going on everywhere else? Well, when when uh, the x values are over here, I get negative one divided by a positive. It's negative. Anything in here? It's going to be negative. Anything in here is going to be negative. So besides the two spots where it's undefined, and notice that I went back and I fixed that up, there should be a hole there, right? Put a hole in there, 
right, where x equals 2. Everywhere else besides the two spots where the function is not defined, the derivative is defined and negative. It's decreasing for all values of x. It's decreasing for all values of x. Uh, dandy. So f at x is decreasing. on x e r x not equal to 2 x not equal to negative 2 um, everywhere dandy okay so that's all I'm going to do I, I've given you a couple more examples see if I can go through them quickly here if there's anything interesting to point out Horizontal asymptote equal to 1. Vertical asymptote there. Uh, intercepts, I get a couple of intercepts at negative 2 and negative 1. Those go on there. Then I think about the mins and max, and I get this awful derivative. I get this derivative, and I set it equal to 0, and I actually get uh, a spot where it's 0. F prime at x is 0 at negative 7 over 5, or positive 7 over 5, and at positive over 7, 7 over 5, it, the, the graph goes from being a negative, or the derivative goes from being negative to positive. Negative to positive means uh, decreasing to increasing means that there's, that there's a uh, minimum there. So there's a minimum right here. Did I actually say that somewhere? Minimum there. Um, and that's the only minimum or maximum. Notice a bit of a strange thing here, a, a chimney at x equals 1, and that's because uh, that's because of this, this sort of thing here. This ca causes the chimney, the chimney action, uh, and hopefully the rest of that. You can ask about in class, of course, if any of these examples uh, don't work or something that you don't know. There's the details, and I think you have them in front of you. Anything uh, neat going on in example D? Oh, there's an oblique asymptote. Remember, when the top is one degree bigger than the bottom, we can get the oblique asymptote by doing long division. Do long division, right? What, what makes this first term disappear? You multiply by 2x, then subtract. Multiply negative 2 by 2 is negative 4x, subtract. Uh, and I get x plus 2, write that down. It doesn't go evenly. Remember, if it goes evenly, we would have had a whole. Right? It doesn't go evenly. There's a remainder. But so that's the oblique asymptote. Where's my picture? There's the oblique asymptote. Um, and I find some intercepts. Oh, no, I don't find some intercepts because it happens to be that the top uh, has no roots. So this never crosses the x-axis, even though it looks like it might. Uh, it does have a y-intercept, as most functions do. There it is right there. There's the y-intercept. And then I took the derivative. Another quotient rule. Bing, 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 bing. Quotient rule, quotient rule. Set the derivative equal to zero. And I get a couple of spots where I get um, critical points. I get critical points at 2 plus the square root of 2 and 2 minus the square root of 2. I put those on my number chart. I got the one spot where the derivative is not defined. x equals 2. Derivative is not defined. The two spots where where I got it equal to zero, and then I I can evaluate the mins and maxes there. I can actually get those spots where it reaches a local maximum and local minimum. Okay, lots and lots of good stuff uh, going on in these examples. But really, most of this picture, besides the maximum and minimum that we saw in this last example, we knew from functions. All right, long video. Time for you to shut me off and get uh, thinking about your homework tomorrow in class.